Long Tail Distribution, Jonathan Vasquez, Justin Tell, and Taryn Vargesi. What do all these companies have in common? eBay, Yahoo, Google, Amazon, iTunes, Netflix. They all have a ridiculous amount of net worth. Billions of dollars in annual revenues. But how? How are they so successful? Advertising? Cool and trendy? Great ideas? Great upper management? Yeah, these all contribute to their success. But what's really the secret behind their success? Long tail. Now you, be, you may be wondering, what's long tail? No, not that. This is long tail. To explain the long tail quickly, it is like being asked, which would you invest in? The most popular place to vacation or everywhere else? Most would go with Vegas and exotic places that are popular. But traveling is not limited to those places. People have to travel to other places too, and there's profits to be made. As you can see in the slide, the majority of the traveling is happening in the bottom of the top 50 travel destinations. From 1998 to 2008, most profit is coming from lower teal countries. But to understand the long tail, we'll talk about Pareto's principle shortly also known as the 80-20 rule. The law of the vital few and the principle of factor sparsity states that for many events roughly 80% of the effects come for 20% of the causes. This common rule of thumb in business 80% of your sales come from 20% of your clients. So the minority of your customers actually make up a lot of your profits. Why is that? First we need, to, we need to describe physical limitations for products. The limitations that used to exist on the market are the, are the physical aspects. There are only so many screens for a movie theater and only so much shelf space for a record store, DVD, rental shop, etc. For a movie theater, films will not be shown unless it can hook 1500 people over a span of two weeks. For a CD to earn its keep in a store, it must sell at least two copies of itself over a year to be worth it. So as you can see, there are many limitations in the retail business of movies, DVDs, video games, books, etc. And a lot of these are hit-driven economies. We used to live in a world of scarcity. We only put our popular items out there. Our mindset was basically if it wasn't a hit, it probably wouldn't make that much money. So we would believe that it wouldn't be worth much. But we came to realize that the biggest money is in the smallest sales. All the executives have figured out that the misses make money too. That the 80-20% that we were talking about earlier that weren't hits will someone likes to listen to them. Google makes most of its money from small advertisements. eBay, the Von Voltron toy that isn't made anymore. You can find it on eBay. Netflix offers a variety of movies. Not only the top box office hits and the Academy Award winning movies, but also black and white movies. Movies from 50 years ago. Now let's break it down. The anatomy of the long tail. Think about it this way. A company like Rhapsody has around 735 tracks of music at its disposal. Walmart only carries 39 tracks at their local stores. 39,000 tracks at their local stores. That's around 5.3% of the tracks that Rhapsody has. It is a fact that Walmart only carries albums that sell at the very least 100,000 copies to make a profit. Otherwise, it wouldn't carry it in the store. This is the price for shelf space that we spoke of earlier. Less than 1% of CDs sell 100,000 copies. If you were wondering, the long tail is all the tracks that aren't exactly mainstream or extremely popular. It's all the different versions of songs, remixed, live tracks, and even covers. Anything can, found be, can be found in the long tail from foreign to local that just couldn't quite make it. The long tail is a collective niche markets that are available through the internet. Every single track from Rhapsody's top 100,000 are played at least once a month. The amazing thing really is that it holds 
true for its top 200,000, top 300,000, and top 400,000. For Barnes & Noble, people would think that most of the revenue comes from their best sellers list. This is simply not true. Most of the revenue comes from outside its top 130,000 titles. But why not just a long tail? Now one would think that if a long tail is so successful, why not just make it a company that was a long tail? The problem with the scenario is that there is nothing to, there is nothing to attract the customer to the product. It's a niche product for a reason. For example, mp3.com was a company that was made so that artists could have a direct link to its audience without having to go through the music corporation. They would, they would just add music to their servers freely and people could download them. What eventually happened was the website was used to was used to play illegal content and the site was sued massively by music labels. On the other side of the spectrum, offering only hits is not the best way to go either. It eventually gets too costly to run. What Amazon and Netflix shows is that both sides of the curve are needed to be extremely successful, not just one. And this is a part of how it worked. Recommendations. Oh, you like Britney Spears? Let me recommend you Pink. Click on Pink. Oh, you like pink? Others oh, also like no doubt. Then bam, you're looking at the selector. Who are they? No idea, but people will listen to it. This is the basic concept of the long tail. Extreme selection. The world that we live in today is a world of abundance. And this is what makes long tail so profitable. Imagine there was a movie theater or a program that could play anything that was ever imaginable where there's not really a need to imagine that power is already here with Netflix and iTunes. But what is a great enabler of the success of the long tail and retail businesses? Technology. The market has moved outside its physical reach. The companies that have flourished are the companies that have pushed past the properties of physical reach and moved to the digital market. Such as the internet, the network of networks, which enables people from across the world to share music, to sell music, and to reach boundaries they never thought were possible. Also, data storage costs. Advances in data storage techniques and rapidly declining storage costs have been responsible for the multiplying databases on individuals, such as customers, which enables companies to data mine and to focus on niche markets which will in the end produce some greater profits. Also with the advancements in mobile and cloud computing, companies are now starting to realize that customers don't have to spend money on physical storage. They can just store it on the cloud and save money and therefore use that money to buy more products online. Apps, games, music, etc. So in conclusion, we would like to end with a quote. The biggest money is in the smallest sales. Long tail is a revolutionary concept that has brought much success to huge corporations. But not alone. With the help of technology, the great enabler, companies who have been able to implement the long tail concept have been able to reach much success.